Welcome to this year's Alvator's Fixtures collections of mine. As you can see, my collection has been highly increased lately. This is because most of them has been gained from a, another Alvator Parch collector that has been passed away several years ago. So, due to contacts to this guy, and due to my popularity on local media, I actually got many of them. Uh, my generic controller system is still there, but I have decided to not use it this year. But, here's all the collection so far. It's actually so much that I cannot care on them myself anymore so most of them will be stored at his and twelve's house for a while and some of them will actually be in sale so if you want to buy anything just let me know let's begin over here here's a lot of buttons from the manufacturer Vilan call and send down buttons. None of them have indicators or something like that on the back side. And they're really simple. They're not so much well great components. Nothing I really want to keep. Here's a stop button. I don't know which brand is it is but it's just a metallic frame. This one is interesting. I heard that this panels, these four very panels, was from an industrial elevator in Westeros. So, so much floors. As you can see, so many indicators. Very cool stuff. And there are very small buttons too. The biggest collection here are of Kuna fixtures. Let's begin here. This is from Finland. From Windows 20 and his own elevator. But all the rest are from Erik, the guy who passed away, which I gained the much part of his collection of. Here's from one elevator. A ground floor and a bow floor. I think there were two panels in a very big freight elevator. There's a stop button in a box. And some more 1960s fixtures. There's a lot of them. There are 1970s fixtures. Door, call button, directional buttons. These two have no components whatsoever. This is special, only 200 kilograms capacity. You can call and send the elevator away. Here's the lanterns. They have a working clean. But it's hard to list them from not because they are there in the collection. The floor indicators. And the new Kone fixtures from factory. Finland. Uh, 1980s fixtures. These two also playing. I can actually give them a try. Here's what they look on the back side. The other one has these components upside down. Let's see if I can get this thing to play by shaking it a bit. Much better accurate. This one must have been a part of a freight elevator. Three persons capacity was a part with this panel from Finland. Over here we have Graham Brothers. More scuffed off panels. 50s and 60s and even a very old one. Next to it we have Asia Graham. 
This is from Hedhamre. And this, uh, most of it is from Eric's collection, except this one is from Gothenburg, together with this panel. And these small components over here. There are some lanterns. The very big one has a bell, but the other three doesn't. But we have some stall buttons. The longest one with six floor have actually a button and some indicators, working components. The other two doesn't. It's a rain star call station. I got this as a gift from Elevator Museum. Thank you. And behind it is a floor indicator panel from Tyson from Erk. The white one says in use. Another one used to say floors, the green one. I wonder who this one used to work. And here's my first panel ever being at Johan's place for a while. I have not brought it back to my own collection again. There's another shaft button. Kalu. Over here we have some Siemens parts. Here's a Siemens button panel. And here's a scale for call buttons. There was a part. Here's for Ulfsund. Lantern and button. Next to it we have an industrial fixture. Hisman. Basement. Ground. Call. Stop. And the generic button panel probably replaced the only one on a gated elevator, I believe. Power, and then the two Otis buttons from Yardet. Below we have Otis Lexan. The Lexan panel is a gift from Elevator Museum. These up and down control buttons are from Yardet, and these in two buttons are from or shoes at the grey building behind the shopping mall not this one in the front but the building behind it's hard to see it from there right now and below it we have lanterns for floor with the select zone and a generic oldest call button with a call fixture and an in-use fixture that can be pushed that's very, very cool. Here we have some unique, and then we have loads of Alsea buttons. Some with indicators, some doesn't. Here we have a switch. I don't have any key of these, but I managed to screw it off and open. So you can turn this switch all the time. There's a floor button. Oops, I. There it is. Floor Stockholm Scissor. Then we go down here, we have Yar. Yar cool buttons. There's an old Yar buttons. An engineer. There's the only Schlier fixture. And then we have some Cronenberg slash Kalea buttons. Some more generics. Here are two deer panels. This is you ones that I got. This is from Eric. And then I mixed this button. So this one used to be here and this one used to be here. This light however used only to work in five seconds. Then it went broken. I have no idea what these fixes used to be, but I believe they were 1950s Diva buttons. Really interesting configuration too. And here's the this one, my favorite fixture. Here are some more fixtures with computer cards and everything like that. This is non elevator related. Poise and wet mark. Stop button. Very beautiful buttons. 
And then we have these veneer buttons. The black thing is a floor indicator. This panel came off from Marble Central. It appeared to be lying just down in the machine room. And it was never used the way it was supposed to use back then. So uh, I saved it. So for else I got here, you may probably love this banner from Heaton 126 in Polnas. I absolutely love this. I know. So old nice controllers. I have no idea what manufacturer made these but I think I have a little idea of how they actually work. They're heavy stuff. This is a gift to his and 12 while I will keep this one over here. You can see all the stuff here. I think I have a little idea of how this thing works. But I think I need someone to explain this for me. To us, so I have a better idea. And except for that, this is my whole collection. And the only time I have the ability to see them for now before Man of Dawn will be stored at his and twelve's place for a while because I have no more space for anything and some of them will even be on sale so if you are interested in anything of these then just let me know and I will give you a, pr a price I hope you enjoyed my elevator parts collection for this year and that's it alright here's my AC to DC converter conversion or electricity to the 33 volts AC to 24 volts DC that's all my buttons that I have collected so far support if this one works, then I can finally make a big light show with all my buttons. So let's give it a try. Like last time, I need to figure out which one the energy source are from. So let's turn the power on. There's nothing here, but here it is. So this AC one needs to be plugged facing to me like this in order for this DC converter to work. 3, 2, 1, go. Here it is. It's very well. In the dark. And let me turn it off. And it fades out. Cool. No, I make the light so it's all my collection. That's it. Alright. I have wired up these things. Got another dear call button panel. So I played along with it. I put it in use light in the owner of our panel. This is the new in-use light from this panel. There's the old call button that used to be here. And here's the old working call in-use light. I put this up and down so this cord can be plugged in here, which has been turned off. I could probably work with this electrical device. By the way, which I need to test it on a working source like this lamp all right we know that this works fine 
and it can detect electricity sources. If you turn this one on, we can see that this one has a source and this one doesn't. Also this one doesn't either. When we turn this off, no, it doesn't work here. And here neither, as well as that one. So now we can actually plug it this in. It's safety. I'm not gonna touch this panel while it is plugged in and working. It is not plugged in. And they both works. The upper one lights much more than the lower one. But it works perfectly. We're amazing. I just by 230 volts. Oops, it seems that the upper one doesn't work anymore. The long one still works as it always has done. The electricity has been turned off. Wait a second, I need to be more comfortable for myself. Let's see if I can turn on the they use lights again. Since that electricity has been cut off on the upper light, unfortunately. The low one still works as it always has done. I need to rewire this thing and see if the upper one still wants to work again. Be back in a minute. Alright, so the four screws have been screwed off. Let's see who I made it behind. Why it doesn't work anymore. Hopefully I didn't have broke down the new light bulb. If you check the back, everything seems to be okay. There's the electric wire, it goes here, and it also continues here. And the blue wire. Was here and here. So the electricity comes through, through the brown wire and through the both of the bulbs and then back to the blue wire to the contact. There's no transformator or anything. This bulb runs through 230 volts 50 hertz that we are using here in Europe. Apparently, the new light bulb. The lower one seems to be broken. Alright, after just a few seconds. That's weird. Since I need to replace it already. And I was unlucky. So the light bulbs work. I have the call buttons. You just say elevate on this one. This is how it looks like in backside. The other one is normally closed and these are normally open. Or if it is the other way around, I'm not just quite sure. But if this person pass pressed I'll make a connection on these two. And if I don't press it, I actually make a connection on these two that are a bit red. You can see the core itself here. Actually, actually makes a connection here. 
it's quite nice. Anyway, it seems that the new induced light bulb has been broken already. I have some other amazing stuff. Oops, I was about to trip over. Here, here we have the the wires that makes our 230 volts alternating current becoming 24 volts the direct current. Not all, not everything else I have in my collection actually needs to use in order to work. So hopefully when I wired up this thing, I'm definitely going to use it to see if the collection here really works. And now I need which one the electric output comes from that cord over there. I don't need to be worried to break this thing down because this can break down if I connect it very wrong. And I hope you enjoyed my little tutorial of how these light bulbs really works. That's it.